In this short video, I'd like to explain how you can use Maya's Bifrost to create such a zero gravity water object that returns to its original shape even if a collision object goes through it. I have set up a scene here with a simple polygon torus and this simple polygon sphere collision object that is animated to go through the torus. So at first I'm going to pick the torus and in the effect section I will go to the Bifrost menu and tell this torus to be a liquid. So it's going to be filled with water particles and immediately after I've done that I can actually hide the torus. So here you see the particles, the water particles. They are very small so I'm going to go to the liquid shape and increase the point size a little bit so that we can better see this thing. The next step would be to select this liquid object and then also the animated collision object and again go to the Bifrost menu and add this object as a collider. So now when we start the simulation the, all the particles or all the liquid would fall down because it's, there's still a gravity applied to it. So here in the Bifrost properties container you can set the gravity to zero. And then we have to make something to make the liquid return to its original shape. Because right now when the collision object goes through it, you know, the liquid is divided and keeps on flying away and is not attracted back to the original shape. And for the original shape, we're going to use um, again this water object or this liquid object. And then the original torus object, which is also the emitter for these particles. So we, we don't delete it, we leave it there, but it's hidden. But I will use the same geometry to apply a motion field. A motion field is a special field that can be anything. It can be a directional force, it can be a, you know, a boundary, something like a box or a sphere or a cylinder or stuff like that. And it can also be a geometry. So in this case, we don't want to have a directional force. What we need here is a geometry force. And in this case, the geometry should attract this water into the back into the original shape. And that is a force along the normal. So instead of pu pushing the, the particles away, which would be a positive force, I'm going to go all the way negative to minus five to attract the particles back into that original shape. That's all I need to apply. I could apply also some drag here, which would um, then slow down the particles a little bit. Could be a good idea. We have to we have to play and, and try that out. So now when I when I play this, I've cached this already. When I play this, it would look like this. So you see, it's not so bad. It comes, it returns to its original shape. Maybe we could add some more details. And these more details, of course, have to do with the uh, master voxel size. So again, I'm selecting the, the particles here or the liquid here. And in the liquid properties, I'm going to go to the master voxel size and bump this up. I could go to 0 0.25 first. So, you know, halving the resolution. Um, or, or, you know, or doubling the uh, resolution, but I'm going to go all the way down to 0 0.125, which is very fine. And then the point size that I've adjusted here is a little bit too um, is a little bit too high. So I'm going to go back to a point size of one, so that we still see points. And I will also change the the remapping of the velocity here. So when I put this down to three, then we see a little bit more of uh, the particles, you know, when they, as soon as they get some motion and they have some velocity, we can better see those particles. And with a higher resolution, it would look like this. You see that there's a lot more details in there and, you know, this, everything looks, you know, the splashes look bigger because we have all of these details. Without that, without the resolution, you know, it looks very dull. It's just to adjust the overall settings and then with a high resolution, of course, it takes longer to simulate. Um, so you want to do that um, later. And then when I turn on the, um, the surfacing uh, or the meshing of this liquid object and turn off the particles, it would look like this. So I've applied a Lambert shader to the surface to make it better visible in the camera window here. So that would be the surface that we can render now with a simple Lambert shader surface. 
you see it looks impressive that you know with a with very little effort we have done this simulation and then the finally rendered version would be this one here so i've simply created an arnold physical sky and uh, bumped up the intensity a little bit and then the rendering looks like this so it's it's, it's pretty impressive for you know such a short um, preparation time